In this video tutorial we will be working on a thick cylindrical pressure vessel that's constrained at the ends and pressurized internally. And this time we will be using an axisymmetric idealization. In Creo we first define a new part. We can give this a name. We need to first make sure that we use the correct unit system. So we change to millimeters, newtons, seconds. And we can assign a material. So in this case, one of the steels, like a low alloy steel. The axisymmetric model has to be defined on the XY plane and the sketch must be on the positive side of the x-axis. So we can select the plane and we can create a revolve operation on this one. So the definition of the sketch is a simple rectangle and internal radius was 100 millimeters. So the thickness is 100 millimeters and the length of the vessel was 500 millimeters. So this defines the axisymmetric cross-section. This will correspond to a 360 degree um, revolve that will give us the 3D solid model. Um, we can work say with a 90 degree segment of that and that will be a quarter symmetric 3D model. So we can OK that and what we can do is select the face selected here um, on the XY plane as the basis of our 2D axisymmetric idealization. So we can go to applications and simulate and first of all save so that's going to back up my model and need to go to model setup, advanced, to the access metric. I need to define the part coordinate system and the surface as the geometry. Press OK and confirm. So on this surface I need to apply some displacement constraints. So on this edge and also on this edge I want to fix them in the y direction but free in the x radial direction so ok that and on the inside face I want to apply a pressure and the pressure load is defined as 100 megapascals we can preview that which is fine and press ok so the model is now ready to solve. We can go to analysis and studies, define a new static analysis, and I'll choose multipass, 5% convergence, the maximum of ninth order polynomial. OK that. Green button to start analysis. Interactive Diagnostics is OK. So this completes very quickly. You can close that and then click that to view the results. OK and show to von Mises results. And that's showing me 226 megapascals. Um, if I look at the display options, deformed, show element, edges um, and undeformed as well. You can see that it's moving in the right direction but effectively this model has only a single element. We can look at the p-levels so the elements have an order of approximately 4 that defines the vertical lines and 
tree and the horizontal lines of this element. I don't think this is a good approximation, um, so I want to close this without saving and close this and use refine model so I can go to control and on this face I want to give element a size of 20 so if I go to auto cham and create that creates um, just over 200 elements quads and triangles so I close that close that yes to save the elements and then I can rerun the model go back to home analysis and studies run yes yes to that again completes in a few seconds close and then look at the results again um, ok and show this time I got 232 megapascals internal stress von Mises stress and that's slightly higher than the single element result so you can add a few more elements and see if this result converges to a value so we can go to edit display options deformed with undeformed with element edges ok and show so you can see that it's deformed in the correct direction so it is expanding and the maximum stress is on the inside surface and much less stress on the, on the outside surface you can change the um, maximum principle maximum principle is actually the hoop stress and that's on the inside surface and that should be the same as the Z stress which it is and minimum principle is the radial stress so it should correspond to minus 100 on the inside surface so our result is just about right and the outside surface radial stress is 0 megapascals which is right as well and we can also look at the uh, Y stress which is the actual stress and we can see that there is about 20 megapascals actual stress and that is due to the full constraints at the top and bottom in the y direction so although this cylinder is trying to expand uh, it is constrained at the end so it can't move actually that means as it is expanding it is creating a tension in the cylinder so next thing we are going to do is define some measures and look at them and compare it with our uh, Lame stresses so we can close this don't need to save just now and we can close that as well and here to define the measures we can click on this and define a new measure um, so we can say S hoop inside and that will be corresponding to my stress in the principal direction and I wanted to evaluate that at a point and I need to pick the point on the inside surface so I need to click this vertex and and press OK so it says vertex edge end and if I press OK that's my um, user defined measure defined I can put another one say stress uh, radial inside surface and this time that will correspond to my X stress and that will need to be evaluated at the point and I can select my point at the same point again inside surface and OK that and press OK so the two user defined 
scoop stress and radial stress on the inside surface are entered as measures. We can close that. After defining the measures, let's rerun this analysis. So that's completed OK. We can close that, open our results, and show our phone misses plot by default. And then to look at the values of our measures, just click on measures, which shows all of the predefined measures as well as the uh, hoop stress and radial stress that we have just defined. So on the inside surface, the hoop stress is 166.6 .6, and the radial stress is nine, minus 99.9. .9. Okay. Next thing to look at is a uh, a graph plot. So we can again open a window from the same analysis. This time instead of a fringe plot I'll choose a graph plot. And on the graph plot I want to see the Z which is the hoop stress or I can do the maximum principle again the hoop stress. This is either relative to curve arc length or through coordinates. Curve arc length is fine, but I need to define the graph location, and that's on a curve. And that has to be defined on the model. So that has to be a line on your model that you can pick. And what I'll do is I'll pick this line, which means it's going to be from the inside surface to the outside. So I'll need to make sure I click this OK. So that selects my line and this other uh, dialog box is important as well. You can define where your graph starts from by clicking on toggle, either from the outside or from the inside. And it's fine, I can start it from the inside surface and press OK. So that defines my graph plot. And if I OK and show, you can see that on the left we got a von Mises stress plot, on the right I've got my um, hoop stresses from about 166 megapascals going to about less than um, less than 70 or so on the uh, outside surface. So the curve arc length is through the thickness of this pressure vessel. So on the inside surface this is the point and as we go to the outside surface, we are going from 0 to 100 millimeters, so 0 to 100 millimeters in the thickness direction. And you can see that we got a high positive result going to a low value as we go through the thickness. We can export this, we can select this window and then do File and Save As and I want to save this as an Excel file. So I've already tried this a couple of times with different names so I can call it hoop export one let's say and save. That creates my file. I need to go and um, open this in Excel. So if I double click on the file that I've just created, it gives me a warning, but I can just say yes, and it'll show me um, the values that's on this plot, the curve arc, the curve arc, and the stresses on that. And I can do the similar plot for the radial stress, and I can create my Lame equations within Excel and I can plot um, my numerical results and analytical results on the same plot and that will give me a good way of validating my results.